video, let us discuss about weight initialization. So look at this neural network now. So here we can see that uh, there are four input neurons. So one input layer and a hidden layer with the five neurons and an output layer with the four neurons, right? So here, how do we choose initial weights? How do we choose initial weights here? What happens when a uh, weight is uh, used as zero or in the initial stage, right? So that is really an important question, right? So let us understand uh, this one. Actually, here you can see that uh, there will be five rows, right? Five rows and four columns, right? So this will lead to 20. And so that we will get five bias, right? So similarly here, you can see that uh, four rows and five columns, yeah, right? So here again, we will be getting 20, right? And then here again, the bias will get added, clear. So this is how we, this is how the neural network works, right? So here my question is that, can I use weight as zero? Can I initialize the weights as zero in a neural network? So if you ask me a question, I'll say that it is not a very good idea uh, because uh, in uh, back propagation, then we should push all the weights in the same direction. Uh, then the network will jump. So no learning asymmetric. Uh, I mean, no learning happens, right? So this is really a tedious task, right? Because we should actually identify the uh, uh, weight initialization part, right? Right. So now let us discuss about these points, right? So here uh, you can see that, like uh, how to initialize the weights, how the weights can be initialized, right? So we are going to discuss on two points now. So the first one is about zero initialization and the second one is about random initialization, right? So what happens when you initialize at zero? As we discussed, the uh, biases are initialized with zero and weights are initialized with random numbers. What if weights are initialized with a zero, right? So this is the question I'm asking from the beginning. If all the weights are initialized with a zero, then the derivative with respect to the loss function is the same for every weight. And thus all the weights will have the same value in the subsequent iterations, right? so that all the hidden units become symmetric and continues for all the iterations. So if you, if I can simply say about it, uh, like if you set weights to zero, it does not make it better than a linear model, right? So the important thing to keep in mind is that biases have no effect whatsoever when initialized with the zero. So, I think this point is clear, right? So now let's discuss about random initialization. So assigning random values to weights is better than zero, but there is one thing to keep in mind that what happens if weights are initialized to high values or very low values? And what is the reasonable initialization of weight values, right? So if weights are initialized with very high values, then when we find out this dot NP dot plus B, this becomes higher. And if an activation function like sigmoid is applied, the function maps its value near to one where the slope of the gradient changes slowly and the learning will take a lot of time. If weights are initialized with the low values, Right. If it is with a low value, what is being expected here? It gets mapped to zero, where the case is the same as the above, right? So this will lead to the problem of a vanishing gradient, right? Fine. So uh, we must be very much careful that uh, the weight should be small. Uh, small in the sense it should not be uh, too high or it shouldn't be very small, right? So this is what uh, I am saying over here, right? Fine. So what is the next point? 
weight must be different. Why do I say that weights should be different? Uh, just imagine that I'm giving the same weights to all the uh, cases, right? If weights are being the same, what we can expect again, the same behavior we can expect with all the neurons. Actually, the real uh, learning may not happen with the neurons, right? So that's the reason we always say that weight should be different. The third point you have to keep it in your mind that weight should have the variance, right? So again, it uh, goes with the second point, right? Like uh, whenever we give weights, the weights should have the variance. Again, the same problem because we are trying to you know, learn about it, right? So when we try to do it, like these are the you know, requirements for the weight initialization. It should be, uh, it should be small, uh, it should not be the same, and then it should have the variance, right? Fine. So whenever you uh, initialize your weights randomly, the values are probably close to zero, uh, given the probability distributions with which they are initialized. So the optimization essentially changes the optimizations in the downstream layers, which means uh, the ones closer to the output. So when we calculate the weights improvement in the upstream, which means the one you are currently trying to optimize, you may face two things. When your weights and gradients are close to zero, the gradients in your upstream layers may vanish because you are multiplying small values, say for example, 0 0.1 into 0 0.1 into 0 0.1 into 0 0.1, right? So what will be, what we will be getting now 0 0.0001. So it's going to be difficult to find out optimum uh, since our upstream layers learn slowly, right? So there could be another uh, case which can be opposite to the previous. Like when your weights and uh, gradients are greater than one, the multiplications become uh, really strong, like 10 into 10 into 10 into 10. So in this case, what may happen is this becomes you no know, uh, 10,000 and the gradients may therefore also explode, right? So there is a possibility of explode also, right? So causing number overflows in your upstream layers. So rendering them untrainable, right? So in both cases, your model will never reach its optimum. So we will be using some initializers, uh, right? Like, uh, you know, hey, or uh, Xavier initializers, which may help us to uh, improve in this, right? So we have discussed about the uh, problems of vanishing and exploding gradient over here. And let us discuss about this, uh, you know, uh, normal or naive initialization, right? So what is meant by this normal uh, or naive initialization? Like here, the weights can be a part of a normal or Gaussian distribution with a mean as zero and unit standard deviation, right? So the random initialization is done so that the convergence is not a false minima. So what do we say over here? Mean is zero and the standard deviation can be a small number but it belongs to normal distribution. When we talk about uniform initialization, uh, here the weights belong to uniform distribution in range A comma B, right? So uh, here that is the difference, right? So this is uh, uniform. Uh, it could be in the uniform range. And in the previous case, we have seen that it was in the uh, normal distribution, right? When we discuss about a he distribution, right? So when we talk about not he, actually he, right? So sometimes we people say it as he, actually it is better to pronounce it as a he initialization, right? Uh, so in case your network is relo activated and he initialization could be one of the method uh, to bring the variance of the outputs. So, I mean, the optimum, I mean, uh, good output, right? So, uh, like here, this is actually a little different from uh, Xavier initialization, uh, right? Uh, here you can see that when using activation functions that were zero centered, and it has output range between minus one comma one, 
for activation functions like tan h activation outputs were having mean of zero and standard deviation one average wise so in case uh, if relu is used instead of tan h it's observed that on average it has standard deviation two very close to square root of two divided by input connections right so this is about uh, hey initialization right so this is basically about relu right and if you differentiate uh, no relu this is what we get right fine right so the next one what we are going to discuss is about uh, xavier initialization right so here uh, what we can uh, understand about uh, xavier initialization is so in xavier initialization what we can uh, understand is it is also almost similar to hay initialization uh, but it is used for tan h activation function and uh, like uh, in uh, the previous one we have seen right uh, we have seen uh, two right in the formula but here it is uh, being replaced with a one right so these methods uh, actually serve as a good starting points for initialization and mitigate the chances of exploding or vanishing gradients right so uh, these set the weights neither too much bigger than one nor too much less than one so the gradients do not vanish or explode too quickly so they help avoid a uh, slow convergence also ensuring that we do not keep oscillating of the minima right so there exist like other variants of the aba and uh, where uh, the main objective again is to minimize the uh, variance of the parameters right so the point to be uh, noted here is like uh, we cannot uh, say which is really good uh, because the see uh, researchers have worked on it a lot and what we could say is like uh, everything depends upon the data set that we get so there is no hard rule or golden rule uh, in uh, uh, no neural network like whether this will go uh, whether what will uh, go good with uh, good with the particular type of data right so this weight initialization uh, should be done randomly but when you do it randomly you must be very much careful with those three points what we discussed right so whenever the weights are initialized it must be small it should not be the same and the weight should have have variance right so these are the three important points we have to keep it in our mind and uh, uh, like this is really important uh, whenever we work with the uh, neural network so uh, hope this is clear to you right Thank you.